Look at that, lovely. Nice chop worms and casters and a few dead maggots. Well, today I'm fishing on the old Neen at Benwick. And the water, it's day ticket water, and you can get tickets on the bank and you can get them from Stan Jay Fishing Tackle in God Manchester. Now, we fish winter leagues on here. We do, used to fish a summer league on here. But what I want to show you on this small session is my approach to chop worm fishing, not only on this drain here, but all the drains in the fens. Uh, all that would change is maybe the rigs may be slightly heavier if they're deeper than the swim I'm fishing today, but the approach would be the same. Uh, hopefully, we'll catch maybe a tench, chance of an eel, and if you do get an eel, normally they're a big eel, maybe a few perch, there's chance of rud, and always you may catch a few roach on worms and casters. And there's always chance of a bream or a skimmer as well. You just never know what may turn up. So looking for bonus fish, and when you're fishing a match, it's always a plus to have a chop worm line because it gives you just the chance of adding a bigger weight quickly into your net along with the other fish. So let's get some bait in the water and let's see what we can catch and I'll talk you through as we go. I just want to take you through the bait that I've got for this session. I've got casters, a pint of casters will probably be ample. I've got some red maggot. I've got some dead maggot, some real smelly dead maggot that I think the big fish love. Because although it might taste or smell nasty to us, don't mean it won't taste nice to the fish. I've got some worms out of manure heap, little red worms, if I turn them over. Perfect to trick the odd big fish. And then I've got dendrobinas, all different sizes. And which for the start of the session, I'll chop up some dendrobinas and I'll mix them with some caster and some dead maggot. And now I chop them up, I have a tin and a pair of scissors. Two pairs of scissors that I've taped together. And very simple way of chopping them up. I'll put a few worms in the tin. Not bother if you've got a little bit of the peat on them or the saw they're in. Stick them between my knees and with the scissors just chop away. And you can chop them very quickly. And the more you chop them, the smaller the segments will be. And I'll I've chopped them there, only probably 30 seconds, but I've got a nice mixture of segments up to maybe half inch, an odd three quarters of an inch piece, but mainly probably quarter to half inch pieces. Then simply tip them in a bait tub and then mix a few dead maggots, a few casters, mix them round. Lovely. What bonus fish wouldn't resist them on the bottom? And then fish, different baits over the top of them, casters, dendrobinas, and then small red worms. Well, to kick it off, put my chopped worms, casters, and dead maggots in the cup. I've probably put in there maybe about 150 mil. Let's cut them in, the line that I'm fishing. And I'll just cut them, and I'll just let the cut fill with water, because this drains, it, it's hardly moving. It's probably not moving. I'll just cut them in, and as they go down, they'll pyramid out. I'll pyramid out onto the bottom to cover an area probably the size of my side tray there. And then through the course of the session, I'll ping a few casters over it that will spread. And what that will do, that may draw some fish into those falling casters, and then they'll find the table of bait that I've cupped in on the bottom, the chopped worms, the casters, and the dead maggots. And so by dinking a few casters, you can draw a few more fish in. Obviously, this drain is 
it's hardly moving, so that'll just go down nicely. And then the loose casters will draw a few more fish from a bigger area into a smaller area and the area that I'm fishing over. Well, I'm starting on a big piece of worm on a proper rig that we'll talk about later. But there, I'll put a big piece of worm on. Look it through the head and always just nip a little bit off the tail. There we have a great big piece of dendrobina. I'm starting on that just to see if there's a big fish out there to take that rather than the small piece. Let's see if there's a big fish there straight away. Let's have a look. There we are, straight away. There may be a perch. There we are, perch, straight away. Lovely fish, look at that. Beautiful perch. Couldn't resist that big piece of worm that I put in, but I'll put a fresh piece on now. So as it's unmarked and looks very natural, nipping off the end of the tail again. Let's check my elastic. Now that took it straight away. I, I didn't expect a bite straight away, but what I was going to say about the way I laid the rig in, I lay it down, I've got a bulk and just one dropper. And I'll just lift it up half a float again, three quarters of float, lay it back in so it settles nicely and just try and hold just slightly back against it if it wants to sort of drift off. And oh, there's another bite straight away. There it goes. That was a slow bite. That to me was like an eel bite. The worm looks okay. That just slowly went down, I left it, but nothing there. Lay it down again. And what I was going to say is once it's settled, every probably 30 seconds, I just lift it. Maybe a float out the water, just drop it back down. Just thinking the fish sitting there around your bait, seeing the worm moving, antagonising him to take it. Works brilliantly for perch, but as it does then for other fish, tench, even I think the eels sit and think, well, I'll get it first before the others get it. Just keep your bait moving every now and again over the bed of bait that's down there. So it sticks out a bit, trying to get the fish to take your hook bait first. And every three or four minutes, I'll just dink a few casters just over that line, just to spread them a little bit to draw other fish in. There we are, another little bite then. Let them have it, that's gone under. There we are. That's another, that's another perch. Right. There we are. Nice bonus weight building fish in a match. Look like I've never seen hook before. Again, I'll just chop the bits of worm up that's on the hook, throw it in. I'll chop worm mix for cupping in, then pick another big worm out, big dendrobina. There's a nice fat one. Just nip the end off. In a normal session, the one feeding dinking casters over, probably every 40 minutes I'd cup maybe 50 mil, 100 mil of chop worms and cast in again. If I'm catching a lot of fish, I'll put a bit in quicker because obviously they're clearing it up. Another perch. I'm going to leave that piece of worm on because there's nothing wrong with it, it's hardly marked. So 
So this time I'm going to lay the rigging as normal, drop it down, just pick up my catapult and dink a couple more casters again. Not many, probably maybe 10. Just spread them a little bit, just to draw some more fish in, hopefully over that table of bait that's down there. Another bite. Another perch. Can be very quick chop worm and then all of a sudden it can die, but that's when you cup in and just leave it and go and do something else. But we're gonna fish this out. Nice big bit of danger. lift up, just antagonise them to take it. Sometimes the drains can uh, pull through and if they're pulling quite a bit and you're going to fish chop worm and obviously you can't cup it in then I'd pull it in with a bait dropper. That way you know it's straight over where you're fishing. So obviously the drain's flowing off your cup it and you're not sure where it's settling down. And with the bait dropper you know you're straight over it. There it goes, look slow. Another perch. Well, it's a great start, this is. Probably got a pound in the net already. Yeah, that's a better fish, that one. I thought eel at first, but it could be a big perch. Now I'm thinking tench. I'm thinking tench now. I think we've got our first tench, have we? Yeah, first tench, look at that. Not a big one, but... Little tinker tinker. Beautiful tench, look at that. Beautiful fish. Absolutely immaculate. Right, well I'm just going to try double cast. I feel now I need to top it up with some worm, some more worm. But before I do that, because I've been drifting the caster over the top, I had a couple of small perch on the drop. I had a nice run of fish. And now it's just seemed to have slowed a little bit, but the last couple of fish were on the drop. So I'm just going to try double caster, just to see if I get another burst and a few more fish before I cup some more in. Let's just try two casters, see what happens. Also, it's a smaller bait than the worm I've been fishing. Double caster. Two lovely casters. And then also, I could just try two little tiny pieces of worm. Just if it tricks another couple of fish before I put another lot of bait in. So let's just see. I've been dripping these casters in. Let's see if it gets another fish. Because obviously where I've been feeding the caster, they must be eating the caster. Yeah, you might get a bonus roach, although... We're looking for a, some bonus fish that may be even bigger than the roach, uh, bigger than the perch. So I've just laid it in again. It's on a lighter rig, so I've got a slower fall. Like where I've been following the cast, and if it's falling through the water slowly, just trying to trick them to take it, there's a bigger fish up in the water. I'll just lay it in once more. Now, if we don't get a bite this time, I'll bring it back in and try two pieces of red worm, because there's no point sitting on it. If it's not happening, 
I'd have had a bite now on worm, so it's just worth a try though. I get a little touch, I think they might be small fish touch it just as it's waiting up. But never sit, sit doing something too long if you're getting no bites or nothing's happening. So let's try two pieces of red worm. I've got a whole little red worm that I got from my mucky that I go to get my worms and I've just cut it in half and put two bits on the hook. He's wiggling like mad this worm. Right, there we are. Look at that. Two lovely little tiny pieces of worm. Look like two little blood worms. Let's get them hanging right, let's see. If we get a bite on that. I'm sure we'll catch a perch on that. Sure we will. Again, just drip a couple of casters over the top. There we are, straight away. Oh, I bumped that. Let's lay in again. There we go, straight away again. There we are. Unbelievable. Two little pieces of red worm. And they're still just as good wiggling away. I'll go out on them again. Just make sure the hooks, the hook was just covered over there. That bit's come off now. Right, let's go back out again. But that was instant. As soon as it went in, it took it virtually on the drop. See if I catch another couple of fish on this and I'll give it a top up and go back in with a bigger piece of worm. Right, I'll just put in the pole cup about another 100 mil of the chopped up worms and casters and dead maggots. I'll just cut them in again and hopefully this may give us another burst of fish. Now just cup it, let the water come into the cup. Just wash it out gently, don't swish them around so they just go down and they just pyramid out as they go down. And put a nice big fat bit of worm on and go over the top of it again. I just want to take you through the two rigs that I'm using for this chop worm session. The first rig I've got to a hollow core elastic through the top kit which is rated 8 to 10 and that is a softer elastic than the other one because of the setup. Now on this one I've got 6 inch hook length which is tied to 012 power micron and the main line as it is with both rigs, is 016. I've got a 6 inch hook length, one number 10 dropper, and then I've got a spread bulk of number 9s, probably an inch apart, to give a nice slow pendulum fall through the water. And the float that I'm using on there is one of my MP4s 4x14. which is a carbon stem and it's a painted fibre bristle and that's just about the right size float for the depth of water, we've probably got maybe four foot there, four and a half foot maximum and the hook that I'm using on there is our MXB2 which is a medium spade end barbed hook nice hook, not too big where I can fish double caster, two bits of little red worm just as a change bait from the heavier rig. And that leads me on to the heavier rig, which this is stepped up now. Obviously elastic is the next one up to here, orange holocore, which is a 10 to 12 rating. But the rig is slightly different. I've got a 14 hook, 16 hook length, again a number 10 dropper, but I've got a little olivet, and this is a 4B16s float, which is probably just over half a gram. And that bulk, or that Olivet there, as just one lump of shot, when I lower the rig in, 
it pulls the worm down and spins it down as if trying to trick the fish to take it. And also, it's a more positive rig. The main line and hook length on there is stepped up as opposed to the other rig, where I've got 016 main line, the same main line, but I'm fishing an 014 power micron hook length because I'm fishing bigger baits and that's the rig that's going to catch the big fish nine times out of ten. And the float on there is one of my MP cart, MP cart 1 4B16. That's got a glass stem and again a painted fibre bristle. But obviously this tip for fishing bigger baits is a thicker diameter bristle as opposed to the MP4 which is a thinner one. This is probably 1.5 and this is probably two and a half mil thick diameter bristle. But a thicker tip for bigger pieces of worm and a thinner tip fishing caster and two little red worms. And then the hook on the heavier setup is a MXB3 which is a strong spade end barbed which is a lovely round curved hook. Beautiful for putting the worm on and slipping it right round the shank. Well that's the two rigs, obviously the beefed up rig, that's fishing big bits of worm because it's a thicker tip flow, it's more positive and then obviously a bigger hook and then the other rig that's lighter elastic, a light hook diameter, a smaller hook where I'll be fishing double cast and little bits of worm and that's through the water on a lighter full. Two rigs, two different approaches, the same swim but obviously one will catch fish when the other one won't. Another nice perch on, oh, that's pulled off there, fishing. Two little bits of red worm now. It's amazing that I, I couldn't get a bite on the heavier rig, and yet I've put on two little bits of red worm, and it's in I've probably had five or six perch straight away on it. And I did pull out of a decent fish, so I don't know what it, what it was. may have been a tench, but I would have thought it felt a little bit like it could have been a skimmer, probably a pound and a half fish. But yeah, let's try it again. Two little bits of red worm on that lighter rig where I can't get a bite on the other rig. I tried caster and I've been feeding it. No, I haven't had a bite on caster. But two little red worms out of the muck heap, unbelievable. Now you wouldn't think there was a fish there. You'd have thought you caught all the perch they'd gone, but put two little bits of red worm on. It's like flicking a switch. There we go again. It's amazing, you don't think there was any perch left down there, and yet, smaller bait, you get a little perch every put in. I'm just going to put a few more worms in that I've chopped up. A few worms, a few casters, a few dead maggots. Not a lot, probably about maybe maybe 50, 60 mil. Not a lot, not a lot. One last little go, pop these on. It's not a lot, just give it another little kick. Catch a few more fish. Then I think we'll finish the session and have a look at what I've caught. I'm going to just go in now, I've fed on a, a big bit of worm this time. Give that just a couple little goes. And then try two little bits of red worm. And then we'll call it a day. It's been a lovely session, caught a lot of fish. Lots of bites. There it goes. This gives them a little kick start just to start feeding again. A little perch. Change the worm. Always looking for that bigger dendra beaner just to stick out amongst the bait I've cupped in.
There you go, another little perch. Let's finish on that and see what we got in the net. There we are, lovely session chop worm fishing on the old Enoch Bennick. Hope you've enjoyed it. Now let's get these back into the water.